Many times electronics aren't worth fixing and this is certainly one of them, but these are always learning opportunities and that little black and white set that I display the time on on my bench, well it went dead. So I want to figure out what went wrong. Sure, it's not worth fixing, but you know what? Principles for this apply to all televisions, so let's check this one out. My little monitor that I've been using to tell the time on has, uh, you guys have probably noticed it for the last couple weeks, hasn't been working because it died. Let's see why it died. So this little TV is like 31 years old. It, uh, I used to, I think I explained this before, I used to use this as a, a viewfinder for my camera, even though it's black and white. All the professional cameras just had a little black and white screen on them anyway, but um, I just mounted, um, I had a bracket for it mounted on the, on the tripod over top of the camera, right? So it was, uh, use it as like a studio monitor for when I was doing long form production work, such as weddings, where I would be, you know, stuck there for a while. It's always nice to have a large monitor to focus with and stuff. And they made accessory monitors for my production camera like this, you know, Sony made little monitors like this that would attach to the camera and they were bloody expensive. So I just got a couple little small TVs and used that and did the job. Okay, as you can see, this is a Samsung. And the uh, first thing I'll check is to see if the fuse is blown, which uh, I don't believe it is, but we'll check it anyway. Fuse is not blown. My power adapter again will apply power to this thing and see that nothing works. We have no horizontal, no vertical, no heater in the tube. Set is completely dead, just as if the fuse was blown. Let's see whether we're getting any voltage to uh, critical components on the board. So we'll just put the meter here, ground to the tuner, and we'll see that we have 12 volts getting to through the fuse so the fuse is not blown and uh, we'll check the, at the power switch here power switch is a couple of red wires right here so this is the power switch back here so we'll just check to make sure that the power switch is passing power 12 volts there we go and 12 volts so the power switch is passing power and nothing is still lighting up so I guess the next thing we need to do is uh, pull the circuit board and take a look at the bottom of the board. I'm going to have to bypass the switch because I have to unplug the, the uh, connector for the switch in order to uh, run any tests on it. Here's the power switch over here, so I'm just, gonna, I'm just going to uh, turn on my iron and bridge the connector over here so that there's power applied to the set as soon as I plug it in. That way I can do some testing. This circuit board doesn't look to be in very good shape. Look at this mess on here. I mean, the, well, this is, this is typical of what Samsung stuff looked like 30 years ago. Like they, they make pretty good electronics these days, but you know back in the in the in this eighties their stuff wasn't that great. So now when I put the power to this unit, it should start up. Well, it's not gonna start up, but it should. It would if it was working. It would come on right away. But at least now I can uh, do some voltage measurements and see where we're missing voltages. Get the scope on here and just see if we get any drive waveform. Yeah, I'm just going to use the old digital scope here just because it's convenient. Okay, this should be my base drive. Looks like we've got drive. That's the horizontal drive to the base. I definitely have drive signal. That's the flyback pulse. So what's our our voltage on this. I think I'm on the times 10 probe of them. Not yet. Times 10, so we're on 5 volts per, di per division. What are we at here? 5 volts per division, so 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. That's about 30 volts peak to peak. I guess I could probably just uh, hit that and it'll tell me. 57, uh, yeah, yeah 27.52 volts peak to peak. Therefore, this thing should be producing a high voltage. You see some of the other connections around here, like that one on the flyback. Don't look to be too swift. I'm just going to go over those and just see whether that will restore my raster. It's 
and certainly I've got the, the drive signals there and it, it's not distorted so it doesn't look like we have a short normally if it, I'd have a really fairly distorted signal when I'm scoping that uh, collector if we had a problem in the transformer or if one of the diodes on the uh, on the secondaries was was bad for example if I scope the yoke I see my horizontal pulses so we know the horizontal is running and it's it's making it to the yoke there's the pulses from the horizontal coil on the yoke so that's looking okay but I have no vertical as you can see nothing on the vertical deflection at all now I know at least one person is going to question why they will claim that there's zero value in this unit and why would anybody spend any time on this this is a troubleshooting video to teach the basics of troubleshooting a vertical circuit and it doesn't matter whether it's a color set or a black and white set um, the principles are all the same so this is the I guess the vertical IC on this one and um, I'm going to check the voltage. I'm just going to look up first of all the pinouts and then we'll, we'll look at the voltages on here and see whether our voltages are correct. And here's the specs for this thing. As you'll see, it's got your vertical oscillator in it, your horizontal oscillator and AFC, shunt regulator, and everything horizontal driver, and it's got the vertical output built in. So let's uh, take a look at some signals off of this thing and see what we're getting out of this chip and what we're not. So pin 9 is my horizontal drive signal, as you can see, it's got a nice, it's the wrong frequency, but it's there, it's showing us 20 kilohertz, but that's the horizontal drive signal, and the vertical is going to be on pin 8 and pin 6, should be driving the, uh, the yoke. But I don't see anything. Nothing off pin 8. According to the drawings here, the PDF, our 12 volt supply should be on pin number 4 and feed through a diode onto pin number 7. So let's get the meter going here and we'll check the voltage on pin number 4. I have 3 volts. Hmm. That gets a little bit low. And the other one should be pin 7 going through this diode. That's probably the diode right there. Anyway, pin four, the voltage is low, and that's feeding the uh, that's feeding the vertical. I think should be 12 volts. Anyway, let's find out why it's not 12 volts. So pin four is fed right from here, from this point here, 3.6. See where that goes. That's actually feeding back to this regulator here, which should be 12 volts, and it's not. Here's our regulator. I think that's our regulator, 3.8. 12 volts here. 12 volts here going into that, and then there's a resistor here, 3.8 volts, and that's ground. Hmm, something's loading this down. There's a big power resistor here, and it's actually quite warm. And that's the regulator, because here's our power in. There's our regulator transistor here. There's a big power resistor across here. It's almost like that transistor is... Uh, shot or open ah that transistor I think is bad it's a regulator transistor watch there see I just kind of jumped it and uh, everything seems to have come on either maybe there's a connection here that's bad or this transistor is kind of gone flaky I'm just gonna look at this real close to see whether there's a connection because I just when I was probing around right in here my voltage came back up so it might be it might be just a connection right there. It doesn't look bad looking at it, but if I check the voltage now, I bet you my my uh, pin four has got full voltage on it. If it's going to fire up again here, so it's not working now. Uh, 
and I've got three volts here and 11 volts there. When I plug it in, nothing happens. And if I'm monitoring the, I guess it's the collector. I think it's a collector. The basin would be BCE, base collector emitter. Three volts. If I just take my finger around, this is the driver. There's a tra another transistor here that, that drives this. And if I just take my finger in here, all of a sudden the voltage comes up to eight volts and the set turns on. Just skin resistance. Just skin resistance across this transistor here is making it turn on. Just like that. Hmm. Something in this area here. Maybe another one well, of the other transistors. There's a little bit of crud on the board here. You can see a little bit of crap on the board right there. Or maybe a connection in here. But something something in this area here is preventing this regulator from turning on. I'll just reflow these, this transistor and the associated resistors around it. So I guess this was the problem because I just resoldered the driver transistor, I resoldered a diode, a couple of resistors, and uh, and cleaned up the uh, voltage regulator pot, and then the set turned on. Problem number one solved. But we still have a problem with the tuner drifting, so let's uh, deal with that next. Well, I got it to start up by just resoldering some of the connections in there, but what I've noticed is that the voltage is shifting. Like, the, like even the voltage for the tuning varactor, you know, watch, and it'll shift. There, see? The, vol the voltage is shifting up and down. So every time the 12 volt supply shifts, the tuner goes off frequency. Hmm. We're getting there. It might be just another connection that's at fault because that's what it turned out to be in this area here where I was chasing down parts thinking that there were parts that were bad and I just resoldered all the connections in this area here on the board. I just went over all of these connections in here and lo and behold, the thing powers up properly now but it's the tuning voltage is drifting so there's got to be another fracture somewhere here that I haven't spotted yet I guess it's time just to sit down with the magnifying glass and take a close look at it and see where we may be having a problem looks like a connection is is, is making an intermittent connection and it's causing the tuning voltage to rise and fall which of course the supply to the tuner this is it's just a variable resistor so if the supply voltage is changing then the wiper voltage is also going to change and that's going to change the tuning voltage to the tuner and cause the tuner to drift all over the place. So if we look at the main filter, this is the this is the DC regulator, it's 8.6 volts. That's not changing. So the tuning voltage, which is 12 volts, is actually coming from a different source because this one's not changing. The tuning voltage comes in, uh, it's up here on pin number one, which is fed from this variable resistor I believe and here is the here's the tuning voltage and you can see that this one's fluctuating how about here on the the master set where you set the you can see that one's changing as well and that's fed from this line here which is a 32 volt line interesting is this one going to change But it might be this control that's at fault. As you can see, the uh, voltage is stable here, but it's fluctuating like mad on this side. There's a, a variable resistor here that sets <clears throat> sets the frequency tuning range. It's right here. 
and that control itself might be causing the problem. I might be wise just to uh, measure the resistance it is and just put a fixed resistor in place of it and see whether that stops the thing from jumping all over the place because it could be this this it could be this uh, it could be this trimmer has gone bad. Oh come on! Oh, I help if I unplug power. Yeah, good warning. The meter starts beeping when I get in there. Okay. Um, 75k. I think that's the side from. Yeah, the other side's open. So I'm just going to get a resistor, and we'll just replace this with a fixed resistor and see whether that changes the problem with the the voltage jumping up and down. It might be something on the. It might be something loading the other side down too, right? It might be in the tuner. But let's just replace that with a fixed resistor first. See if that'll stop this thing from jump. I just it doesn't matter whether that's that I, that, that control can probably be eliminated. I probably could jump it and it would work, but that's just so that the dial on here would be calibrated for the channel, which that doesn't even work. The little, the little uh, tuning string, there was a little dial string on here that moved the dial up and down. And this, as you can see, the dial string's gone, so I have no reference as to what channel it's on. I just use this to monitor the time or monitor my security cameras. That's all, that's all it's ever used for. So uh, a fixed resistor should do the job fine in there in place of that uh, variable control. So disconnect that from one side <clears throat> and we'll just put this little resistor in place of the uh, variable pot. Oh, let's see if it'll stay stable. Let's I think it's looking better already. It's not jumping all over the place. I think that uh, variable pot there, it was uh, going bad. The carbon was going bad on it or something and uh, it was changing resistance because now you can see that this is stable. And this little TV now looks like it's ready to go back into service. Checking all those few components and finding none that were bad. And I think uh, in, the, in the end, it was just one of the connections on the board there were one of those back in here were the uh, in the power supply regulator back here at the back end of the board right down here this is the voltage regulator control that, can, that sets the B plus and it was right in this area where if I if I put my finger on this side of the board and specifically between right in between the terminal on this I just want I don't want to point with anything metal here because it's turned on obviously but uh, um, right down here between this terminal and that end of the diode the cathode of the diode in particular but if it, when it wasn't turning on if I put my finger right between those two terminals on the other side of the board but this is where they were it would cause it to turn on so I just resoldered the connections in this area here and um, the unit works you know I, I mean I had a bad reading on this resistor but I don't know why maybe it was because there may have been still some charge in one of these capacitors and I was picking up some voltage and it was giving me a false reading it showed it as being high this this uh, this 100 ohm resistor was showing high but when I pulled the resistor it was fine and I checked the transistor the transistor was fine I checked the regulator transistor over here it was fine uh, this capacitor measured fine as well when I checked that out so uh, all the components I checked tested okay I put the original components back in no components changed uh, I just resoldered this area of the board 
which as I say before this as you saw this board is not in really good shape this this TV is something that uh, I've had this thing for <clears throat> for many years and I actually got it for free I didn't pay anything for this it was something that I picked up at the shop I think someone brought it in and wanted it fixed and uh, you know the, the the guys at the front counter didn't want to say it's not worth fixing at the time it was like okay we'll look at it and then it went into the back and they got a phone call saying yeah this thing's not worth fixing you know it, it's not worth it's not economical to fix and it was like okay toss it out okay so I take it home and uh, made it work as a monitor and I used it on my camera as a monitor for a long time because it gave me a bigger viewfinder to focus on when I was doing long form stuff and I used it as that for for many years that's what this whole that's what this hole in the, the cabinet was for was uh, I had a bracket on here that, that actually went around the unit and it attached to my uh, attached to my my camera attached to my tripod actually to the to the to the side of my tripod the opposite side where the control handle was I had a bracket coming out of there that I could screw the other one onto anyway um let's uh, put this thing together and see what it does but as you can see, the, uh, the picture is holding now. It's not it's not jumping in and out like crazy like it was before. So I think the uh, the problem with the tuner is solved. And there it is, tuned back into the clock again, which is basically what I've been using this thing for for forever. It's just I have it as a a desk clock. How cool is that? Just a TV. Definitely not the smallest CRT made, but certainly this is small. Get the size of that little gun. I think the smaller tubes actually probably had about the same size of neck on them as this, but uh, yeah, it's pretty tiny. Okay, that's back together. Let's uh, just plug this thing in here and see whether it powers up. I got the power switch connected now again. Looks like it's working. Maybe just adjust my centering here a bit with the centering magnets. One screw to hold it together. Good enough. Thing takes a while to warm up. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one real soon.